What is up guys, Mounty here from Mount GT, back again with another video, and we are finally going to be exploring the ultra wideband capabilities of the Motorola Moto Tag. Now I know I promised that this video would be coming a very long time ago, but unfortunately I wasn't able to find the time to borrow one of my parents' phones to use for the ultra wideband test because as you guys know before, I was using the base Google Pixel 6, which does not have ultra wideband capability. But now that we have upgraded to the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL, which was in my last video, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. We can now test out the ultra wideband capability of this Moto Tag right here. This Moto Tag in particular is the one that was in my bike that we used in the real world Moto Tag tracking test. And the battery on it is dead and hasn't been paired to this phone yet. So we're gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna jump into the ultra wideband test. All right, so first things first, obviously we need to change the battery in this. So I've already shown this off, but just as a reminder, if the battery in your Moto Tag is dead, you're just gonna push down on this, twist the back cover, and it pops off. Now that it's out, we're just gonna replace it. I've gone with a Duracell replacement this time around because the Energizer ones that I've been using don't seem to be lasting very long, so might as well try it out. All right, now we're gonna reset the Moto Tag, which you're gonna wanna do anytime you get a new phone or if you reset your phone. The reset process on the Moto Tag is a little bit complicated and the way that it's outlined on the website doesn't always work. What seems to work pretty reliably for me is you press, you click the button once, then you click it again and hold. You'll hear one beep. After you hear the first beep, click and hold again. You should hear another beep and then the Moto Tag should be reset. So let's try it out. There's our first beep. We're gonna click and hold again. We hear another beep. All right, and now that we've reset it, a sign that it has reset successfully is you'll see it uh, brings up the pairing prompt. So we're gonna hit connect, we're gonna repair the Moto Tag, and then we are going to jump into everything you need to know about using ultra wideband with your Motorola Moto Tag, which is still the only Find My Device compatible tracker that has ultra wideband built in. All right, so we are here in the Google Find My Device app, and this is where you access the ultra wideband capabilities. It's not done through the MotoTag app, but you'll see if I hit the Find Nearby button, there's no sort of precise finding at all. It is just telling me, move around the shape fills as you get closer to the device. It's not giving me any distance information like it should. Now for reference, if you wanna see what it should look like when you have the ultra wideband capability working. This is the Moto Tag that is on my keys. If I go to my keys on the app, I hit find nearby, it's connected. And it says it's here because it's really close obviously. But if I move the tag further away, you'll see that now it gives me a distance indicator. If I do that again, hold my phone straight up. All right, there we go. So you'll see, come on. There it is, just like that. You see it gives me a distance indicator, and then obviously once it's closer, it's here. So you're probably wondering, well, why didn't it work on this Moto Tag? So it's important to note that in order to use the ultra wideband feature on the Moto Tag, you're going to have to make sure your Moto Tag is fully up to date. So in the Moto Tag app, we're just gonna go and hit on the bike Moto Tag it's going to connect over Bluetooth, which again, that's why it's important to make sure it is actually connected to your phone because you want to make sure that you can connect to it over Bluetooth to update it. So we are going to, let's see here. Let's go out of it, tap on it again. All right, so another thing to note, you'll see here it says, please ensure your tag battery level is normal to reliably use precision finding. So that's the second thing you need to know about. Not only do you need to have the update, you do need to make sure that the battery in your Moto Tags is good and showing the normal status. If the battery level is low, I'm assuming it's not going to give power to the ultra wideband chip that is inside the tracker and you won't be able to use precision finding. So we are going to hit on more. We're gonna tap on firmware. It looks like the firmware is in fact up to date. So now what we're going to go back and do is we're going to go back to Find Hub on our phone. I'm going to tap on bike. 
we're going to hit find nearby, it's connected. And now if I take the tag, move it out of frame, you'll see we are getting our distance indicator. So it also gives us the option to give access to the device camera. We're going to hit while using the app. And once we move the tag away, if I move it further away, if I point it at the tag, it should, let's see if we can get this to work. We may have to uh, move to the other test that I had planned for the video, but basically the camera will help you, um, will give you hints as to where your tag might be. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go downstairs. I'm going to stuff this in one of my couch cushions and we are going to try to find the tag. Alrighty guys, we are now downstairs. I switched to using my keys because I figured that would probably be a little bit better than a bare moto tag. And I have hidden them in my backpack that is right over there. So we have opened up the view here. You'll see it says keys, gives us the direction. So obviously if you didn't know where your item was, you'd probably just be sort of wandering around. And you'll see it uh, gives me a little arrow. It says the device is behind you, so I know I need to turn around, turn left, turn left, device is in front of you. So now we are going to keep walking. I'm just gonna walk straight. Not gonna give it any help even though we do know where the item is. All right, it says it's here. So in my testing, I haven't been able to get any sort of camera functionality to work. Um, I don't know if somehow that camera permission gives us the directional arrows, but I would have assumed that that is all um, due to the ultra wide band. But the keys are uh, actually, hold on one second. I believe I tossed them right in here. So here they are, here are the keys. Now you'll notice when we put the phone on a flat surface where the camera is not detecting any light, it tells us to turn on the flashlight more light needed to find the device. So if we hit the flashlight, you'll see the flashlight does come on on our device, but there's no sort of screen or anything that seems to take advantage of the camera. Uh, once again, we put it flat down at least before, yep, you'll see it says it again, turn on flashlight, more light needed to find the device. So I'm really not sure what the camera integration has to do with the finding feature. In my experience, in my testing that I've done, uh, brief testing that I did before I made this video, we, I really wasn't able to get any sort of camera screen to show up on the device, but the ultra wideband tracking, it does work very, very well. We can do another test here real quick. All right, so this time I have tossed them over in that corner. We've got it again, so here it's giving us the instruction, hold your phone straight up and try moving around. So I'm just gonna walk straight here and it should start to give us some guidance. Try moving in a different direction. Let's go this way. See if it gives us any sort of hints. So you'll see connection lost, try moving again. Okay, now it says the device is behind you. So once again, we're still not seeing any sort of camera integration at all. Now it's saying move around, device is further away. We're gonna rotate this way. All right, there it is. 9.4, device is in front of you. We're gonna keep walking straight towards this wall. So now it says it's here, which obviously it is not here. It's over there in that corner. Uh, it wants us to turn left, which is <laughs> incorrect, okay? Now it says turn right. Editor Mao here, just wanted to make a quick note and say that even if the position tracking tells you to go in the wrong direction like it did for me, at this point you could also just make your device ring, which I didn't do in the video, and that would definitely help you find where it is. But this is kind of what you can expect using the ultra wideband feature with Find My Device on a compatible Android device with a compatible tracker such as the Moto Tag. So what I'm gonna do now actually is I'm going to go in my backyard, I'm gonna to toss my keys somewhere in the grass, I'm just gonna turn around, toss them behind me, and uh, we'll see if we can use this to figure out where in the grass my keys landed. Let's give it a shot. All right, you guys, so we are now outside. Uh, you can see it says keys near you right now, so we're gonna hit find nearby, and it is connected. So I literally turned my back to my uh, backyard 
tossed my keys, so I have no idea where they are right now. Let's see if we can find them. So it says devices further away. Uh, we're going to turn around. Now, I did just catch a glimpse of where they are. I guess I didn't do a great job of throwing them. But this is, I guess, like an outside test. So it says try moving in a different direction. I'm just going to be ignorant. Uh, we are getting closer, it looks like. So 10 feet, connection lost, try moving again. Okay, try moving in a different direction. We'll listen, connection lost. All right, so it's now giving us some directional arrows. We've got a distance, device is in front of you. And it's here, which it in fact is. So that's what, it, that's what the testing is like, or that's what the experience is like, I should say, when you are trying to find something outside. It looks like, you know, just by nature of being outside, even though I am in a pretty open backyard right now with nothing really around, there is probably still a little bit of interference, which is why even though I was close to it, it was saying connection lost and stuff like that. But honestly, the feature seems to work pretty well. It seems to give you accuracy within three feet of where your item is. I feel like I've seen numbers lower than that. I feel like I've seen two feet sometimes, but it seems to be uh, accurate within about three and a half feet. And then it just tells you that the device you're looking for, the item that you're looking for is where you are. So yeah, that's kind of what the testing looks like. All right, you guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Just a quick one showing you how the ultra wideband precision finding feature works with Google's find my device and the Motorola Moto tag, which again is still the only find my device tracker that has ultra wideband capabilities. Just to wrap things up, we are going to go over some of the most important things to note that you need to know when you're trying to use this feature. One, you need to make sure that your Moto tag is on the newest firmware update. So by the way to check that is to use the Moto tag app. You tap on whichever tag that you're trying to update. You're going to scroll down and tap on, you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna tap on more, and you're going to go to firmware. And as long as it says up to date here on the firmware update screen, it doesn't show an update, you are good to go. At the time of recording, the current version is 2.0.104. So at least as long as you're on this version, it should work on the Moto Tag side. You're also going to want to make sure, as the app warns you, that your tag battery level is normal. So by that, it's referring to the battery status here that says battery normal. If the tag battery is too low, it's very likely that the ultra wideband feature will not work as reliably or probably not work at all. Now, both of my Moto tags have been at normal during my testing of this. I just pulled the Moto tag out of my bike uh, because it was completely dead. So I haven't had any time to do testing to see if the ultra wideband feature just doesn't work at all when the battery is low or if it's just very unreliable, very spotty, but uh, in, I guess, the coming months, I will try to do some testing on that for you guys and let you know, maybe on a community post or on an Instagram post, uh, how the battery life affects ultra wideband precision finding. The other important thing to note is that you are going to need a compatible Android device. Now, I don't know the full list of devices. Generally, any Android device with ultra wideband capabilities should be able to take advantage of the precision finding feature that is built into Find My Device and the Moto Tag. But I have heard reports that even some of the older pixels that do have ultra wideband built in, such as the Pixel 6 Pro, which is actually what I was going to use for this video instead of my own phone, the Pixel 6 Pro, the Pixel 7 Pro, some of the older pixels that are supposed to have ultra wideband capabilities, some people have been reporting that they haven't been able to use the precision finding feature with their Moto Tags. So your mileage may vary. I can say for sure that at least the Pixel 10 series is compatible with the feature, and I will try to do some research, maybe include a little note somewhere here in the video about compatibility, but generally you will need an Android device that has ultra wideband capabilities. You're gonna need to make sure that that uh, is toggled on. So in the case of the Pixel 10 Pro XL, you're gonna hop into your settings, go to connected devices. We're gonna go to connection preferences, and then we're going to scroll down and you want to make sure that ultra wideband is toggled on at least for the pixel 10 series 
this is pretty much all you'll need to do on your device to make sure that you have what you need to use precision finding. Now, it I believe it's restricted to just the Pros. So the Pixel 10 Pro and 10 Pro XL have the ultra wideband chip. I believe the 10 Pro Fold also has ultra wideband capabilities. If you have a base model Pixel 10, that doesn't have ultra wideband, so you won't be able to use that. Uh, and that goes for everything else in the Pixel line. So generally, you need a Pro Pixel or any other Android device that supports ultra wideband. I believe Samsung's phones also support ultra wideband. I know my mom's Galaxy Z Fold 5 has ultra wideband capabilities. So make sure you have a compatible device. Make sure your Moto Tag has enough battery and is up to date, and you should be able to take advantage of precision finding. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any other questions or want to see any other testing. I will be releasing a full review on the Pixel 10 Pro XL, hopefully sometime here soon. I have really been enjoying the device. There are a couple of things that I'm not 100% satisfied with, but overall, I do really like it, and stay tuned for the full review to hear all of my thoughts on this phone. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.